Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Hi everybody, Pastor Everett. Excited to bring the Word of God to you tonight. I want to look at a verse. I'm going to jump right into it. I got a lot to say and I don't have enough time. But in Ruth chapter 3 verse 18 it says, uh, Naomi is speaking to Ruth, and she says to, to, to Ruth, Sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall. For the man will not rest until he hath finished the thing this day. And so I want to just add a little context to that, that, that word of God there, that, that little verse. And I want to talk to you about the topic of sitting and, I, and still, okay? I want to take those two words, and if I say it together, I would say, sit still. <laughs> so um, maybe you should say that to your neighbor right now. Sit still. Say that to yourself right now. Sit still and hear the Word of God. And, you know, Ruth, Ruth doesn't come from uh, a position of, of no pain. Uh, uh, she doesn't come from a position uh, of no hurt. She had lost her husband. She was in another, uh, in, in another country, another, uh, another place. Naomi was there, had two, two boys, and both her boys got married to two beautiful ladies, and they both died. And Naomi decided to go back. She, she is in pain. She was hurting, obviously. She was suffering, suffered a great loss. And she started to go back uh, to the land of Israel, and Ruth went with her. She said, I got to go with you. I got to go. I just got to go with you. She, she, she went with Naomi and they got back to their, their homeland, their country. And Ruth was forced to go out and glean fields for food. You know, they, she needed to eat. And so she went to provide uh, just food for Naomi and her. And, and she needed uh, uh, help. She needed a, a redeemer. <laughs> And I, I just want to say that. I'm not going to really go further into that because I really want to talk to you about a, a couple other issues, but she needed a redeemer. Can, can you just say that with me? Like Ruth, I need a redeemer. See, because like Ruth, we need a redeemer. We need, we need Jesus. We need Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We need him in our life because most of us can relate. We've been through some stuff, okay? We've been through some circumstances in our life. We've been through some trials in our life. We've been through, through some failed relationships in our life. We have issues that have gone on before us. And, and, and I, I just want to talk to you really just for a few moments about the two words, uh, sit and still. I'm going to start with still. Because still is really two, has two meanings. Because we could say it like, am I still going through the same thing in my life that I've been going through for a long time? Is this still happening to me? Or we'll see a, we'll see a repeat that'll happen in, in our life. Like, I got hurt over here, now I got hurt again. I know I'm going to get hurt again. And pretty soon or we keep expecting the same thing to occur in our life over and over and over. And a lot of times it does. But, but to really be still in our life, whether it's whether it's the still things that keep happening, is, is it happening to me still? Am I still going through this? Or is, is it to be still, to, to, to calm our spirit? That is, that is something that it, it takes faith. It takes faith to be still. It takes faith to have something happening, happening still in my life. It, you're either having faith in, the, in fear, okay, fear of what could happen, fear that it will happen again, or we have faith that God is going to turn it all around for good. So, so we have to come to a place where we put our faith in, in, in being still. Being still will require faith, okay? Whether it's right faith or wrong faith, right? So we have, we have, we have problems in our life. Most of us have problems in our life. Uh, I, I think it's the first thing that comes to our mind. Like whenever we go to some, uh, maybe it's to church or we go home or we go... How, uh, to work or, or, or we're driving our car, we have problems in our mind. So we begin to think about those problems first and we begin to really hold God accountable sometimes in our life for something that has gone on in our past. And so we begin to expect God to fix it in my life. Or, or even worse, we hold God accountable so that we say, you know what, God, I was faithful when I walked through that situation and now I'm going to expect you 
to make it good for me on the other side. My, my expectation is because I went through this, I'm going to expect you to do something great in my life to make up for what I went through. And so we're holding God accountable for something we need to release to him, whether or not we get on the other side of that and God, God fulfills everything or dumps a big truckload of money on you or whatever uh, gives you a, a, a better relationship, gives you a better car, gives you a better job. Uh, we, we have to relieve God, release God of the leverage of my expectation that I'm expecting him because real love, real love just loves. Remember that. Real love just loves. God just loves you. He's not expecting you. He's, he's expecting nothing. There's, there's nothing I can do to, to make God love me more. And so there's nothing that I should be doing to expect God to love me more either. Okay? I should just be loving God. Amen? Without expectation. That's, that's what real love is. Real love is giving yourself away without the expectation of a return. Amen? So that's what real love should look like. Or our solutions, because we, we have solutions, and, and most of the time, all of our solutions fail. I'm going to tell you that right now. Most of our solutions are not going to last. Most of our solutions don't ever turn out the way that, that we think they should. Right? So we have to stop applying the advice we learned from the world to a spiritual solution. Right? My relationship with God isn't dependent upon the wisdom of the world. Matter of fact, God says in his word, he says the wisdom of the world uh, is, or, or the foolishness of the world uh, is, 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 or the, is, let me say this, God's wisdom will confound the wisest person in the world, right? So, the, so that it become it looks like foolishness to the world in the world's, world's way of doing it, right? It, it it's uh, advice from the world is backwards to wisdom. Let me say, say it like that. We try to take the wisdom of the world and apply it to our life and make it look spiritual. That's, that's, that's backwards, right? It's backwards. Well, uh, we, we, we need to apply the wisdom of God into our life, right? And, and, it will, and, and when God puts wisdom in us, right, when, it, when, when, when we apply the spiritual wisdom to, into our life, we will demonstrate to the world that there is a God. There is a God that has appeared to you. You will look different to the world, but you will be at peace inside. We will have everything that we need because we really have everything that we need. That's where, how it shows up, though, is in your ability to be still. Trust that God is working in your life, in your circumstance, in your situation. Let him work in you first, though. Amen? Let him work in you first. Be still. And then sitting, right? Sitting is patience in your position. Like, like have you actually asked God, Father, Lord, give me patience? Because <laughs> most of the time when you ask God for patience, he's going to give you a trial. Because he's looking for you to grow in relationship with him. You never grow unless you're uncomfortable. So if we're, if we're in a comfort position, we are not going to grow in our relationship with God. So we need trials, right, in our life. Uh, we, need, we need patience in our situation so that we can, we can know the weight right and wrong in our life. We need to understand that. Uh, we need to practice being still. <laughs> I, I want you, I, you know, when, whenever we do prayer on, on Tuesdays at church, we get together and, and almost every week uh, at the end of it, I'll say to, I'll say to everybody, hey, just, let's just take uh, a few moments now and just listen, okay? And I tell them this story. I'll abbreviate the story for time's sake, but I, I was praying one time in my, uh, in my, in my room uh, next to my bed, and I was kneeled down, and I began to pray, and I was, I was like telling God all the problems I had, all the situations I had, all the solutions that I thought should happen, and, and I was telling them about everybody that needed help. And I, was, I had this, this list and I was naming names and, and, and telling God all this stuff. And, and all of a sudden I heard, just as clear as day, I heard, I heard the voice of the Lord. He said to me, he said, Pastor Robert, he didn't actually say that. He just said, you need to listen. And I said, oh, yeah, okay, God. And so I began to, I said, okay, I'll listen. And I, and I, 
I, I put my phone and I, I put a timer on it because, you know, I wanted to make sure that I was listening for, uh, you know, exactly two minutes or three minutes. And, and I put the timer on and I, I began to listen. And I, and, I, and I listened and I listened and I listened and pretty much it was 10 minutes and 15 minutes and 20 minutes and a half hour, 45 minutes. And it was all, I, 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 I pushed it. I went a whole hour. And you know what God said? He, said, he didn't say anything to me. He said nothing at all. And I was like, I was like, in that moment, I realized that God had taught me a very, a very precious uh, truth, a very, uh, a, a precious key to relationship with him. It's not me telling God what to do. It's me listening to what he wants to do in my life, because he's the one that is above the situation. He's the one that's above the circumstance. He's the one that, that I need to change me. I need my, my life changed. I need my heart changed. I need my mind changed. And so that, that, that sitting still is something that we need to really implement. It's a, these are keys to help us become something that we weren't. We, we, we need the Redeemer to come into our life, into our circumstance, into our situation so that so that God can take what's bad and make it good you know Ruth, Ruth went on to bear sons and and she she went on to restore through Boaz her life was restored her her uh, her inheritance was restored Naomi was blessed through the obedience of Ruth and Boaz so there was a there was a coming together there was a there was a process that happened and that's the same process through which uh, David came and Jesus ultimately came into the world was through that, that, that obedience. See, obedience will always reproduce great things in your life. That's so powerful right there. I wish I had more time to talk with you. But obedience, sitting still and letting God work and trusting Him will always bring you to a place of, of new fruit, right? Of, of, of the plan of God, to bring you to the place where God's plan will begin to, to work through your life to another life, to another life, to another life, to another life, so that, so that I don't just live my life for myself, I live it for His glory and for His power and for His plan in my life. Amen? Let me just pray with you. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for this word. We thank you for this time we had together. And Father, I pray right now, that you touch us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Father, we give you our heart. We give you our mind. We give you our past hurt. We give you our future expectation. And Father, we thank you for the gift right now where we can sit and be still and know that you are already working on the problem. You've already worked it out. Help us to have faith and to trust you with our next moments. And Father, I just love you and I thank you for all you're doing. I thank you for this, our breakthrough family. I thank you for those that are extended out, Lord, all over the world. And I ask that you touch them right where they are right now. Let your spirit fall upon them. And I thank you, Father, for all the, all the great things you're doing right now, all over the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Now, don't just run away. We want to connect with you. So if you go to mybreakthrough.online, that's mybreakthrough, one word, dot online, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook. Uh, most importantly, though, sh hit the share button. Share this message with somebody else. God will bless you because you're moving the kingdom of, of God forward. We're speaking truth right from the word of God, and we're asking God, to do whatever he needs to do in the world around us today. Amen? Today. God bless you. Have a great evening.